first Sunday of February. This is Black History Month. Amen. We want to take this moment to recognize our history. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So today, I have a few people I'd like to recognize. Amen. Um, is that all? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, just wanted to let, you know, each year Black History Month is recognized during the month of February, as you know. And what it does is celebrates the achievements by African Americans and remember the important roles of our people in U.S. history. Well, as I was studying, I was looking back and, you know, we, we talk about all of the people in black history, Dr. King, Sojourner Truth, Mary McLeod Bethune, so many others. And so I went back, being that we're in the state of South Carolina, I looked back and looked at some people who were from South Carolina. Amen. And so I just wanted to share with you all a couple of those people. And as you know, it was... Black History Month started out like Mr. Uh, Carter G. Woodson, and he first recognized it as Black History Week. He and Jesse Moreland, they have founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, and now it's the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Well, in 1926, they launched Negro History Week, which was strategically planned during the month of February because it contained Frederick Douglass's birthday, which is February 14th, and the birthday of Abraham Lincoln, February 12th. By the 1960s, college and university started to recognize February as Black History Month on campus. And when Gerald Ford became president, he decreed Black History Month a national observance in 1976. So, as I thought about some people, there were some people I wanted to mention to you all today. Robert Smalls, who's actually from Beaufort, South Carolina. He was born in 1839 and died in 1915. Well, as a slave, Mr. Smalls hijacked a Confederate steamship. He disguised himself as a white captain and sailed to Union safely. He went on to become a captain of the U.S. Navy and a representative in the U.S. Congress. Anna DaCosta Banks from Charleston, South Carolina, was born in 1869 and she died in 1930. She was a private nurse with the Ladies Benevolent Society in Charleston and a pioneer for students during her long career at the hospital and training school for nurses in Charleston. Today, a wing of MUSC Health is named after her. Dr. Matilda Arabelle Evans out of Aiken, South Carolina. She was born in 1872, died in 1935. And in 1897, she became the first African-American woman licensed as a physician in South Carolina. Amen. Carlotta Spears Bass from Sumter, South Carolina, was born in 1874. She died in 1969. She was a newspaper publisher and civil rights leader who became the first African-American woman to run for national office as vice president of the United States in 1952. Right there is something. Amen. Septima Poinsettia Clark from Charleston. She was born in 1898 died in 1987, known as the Queen Mother of the Civil Rights Movement. She helped establish citizenship schools across the South so blacks can learn to read and vote. When Dr. King was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, he asked Clark to go with him to Norway because she deserved the award as much as he did. Amen. And one more I'm going to read for you today. Clayton Pegleg Bates from Fountain Inn, South Carolina, born in 1907. He died in 1998. He worked as a child laborer in a cotton mill where he lost his leg. Yet he went on to establish a 
successful career as a tap dancer. In the 1930s, he became a Broadway star and made over 20 appearances on the Ed Sullivan Show during the 50s and 60s. A bronze statue of him stands in his hometown of Fountain Hill, South Carolina. Amen. These are just a few people from the state of South Carolina who are very influential in our history. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God again. And those of you, I'm going to challenge our youth. The rest of this month, I want our kiddies to come up with one person. Amen. Amen. So I want the young people, parents, help them out. All right? I want them to be able to tell us about one person. And so if there's a baby, the baby can give it a name. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we got three more Sundays. So I want to hear these babies. Amen. Amen. Our history is very important. And I know that the schools are trying to wipe it out. But we, it's our responsibility as parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins, whatever it is, to continue to teach them. Amen. Amen. So let's remember. I know a lot of people say, wow, we got the shortest month of the year, but I just read it to you a while. <laughs> All right? They didn't give us the month. We decided on that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you today. Amen. For all of you coming on today, we bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I toiled with this word for a little bit, but I have to ask that you pray for us. Pray for the, the church, not this church, but the church. Every believer, every person who wants to recognize our Lord and Savior as their Lord and Savior. Amen. And we'll be coming from the book of Matthew chapter 3. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3. Hallelujah. Matthew, chapter 3. And we'll start with verse number 7. Thank you, Lord. Y'all feel all right? Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 3, starting with verse number 7. I'll be reading from the King James Version. <laughs> the Word of God says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance, and think not to say within the, yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children of Abraham. And now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree, somebody say every tree. Every tree. Every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down or cut down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You may be seated. scripture. 
scriptures comes the topic, the great separation. The great separation. And if I had a subtitle on me, are you the wheat or are you the chaff? Are you the wheat or the chaff? My brothers and sisters, we have the story here of John the Baptist as told by Matthew. And this gospel, it moves from narrating the infancy stories of Jesus Christ to two preparatory events in the ministry of Jesus. His baptism and his temptation. And John the Baptist, y'all, he's introduced here as the forerunner of Jesus, the Messiah. He's baptizing Jews in the wilderness near the Jordan. And he's not only baptizing them, but while he is doing that, he is calling for God's people to repent. Why? He says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My brothers and sisters, it's near. Time is winding up. Get your house in order. Keep oil in your lamp. The train is at the station. Get right church and let's go home. Whatever you translate that to be, John the Baptist is telling people to repent and be baptized. He preached it in Judea. He preached it to the Jews from which Jesus is from. Children of Israel. God's chosen people. John the Baptist is preaching to the church. He has to preach to God's children. He has to tell them to repent. Why? He says because Jesus is on the way. It says, turn from your wicked ways. Why? Because the Lord is coming. It's amazing how the same sermon that was preached way back then can be still preached today. How God is telling us through actions, through events, through people. Who would have thought that Luke of Elgin would have 20 earthquakes in one month? Who would have thought that God Everybody. 
Caleb. We talked about reacting. Caleb brought up a good thing this morning. Right? Every action that somebody gives to you does not deserve a reaction. Sometimes people say stuff just to see your reaction.
It's, it's in obedience to the command of God. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. It mentions that. The same message of a coming Messiah was preached by the prophet Isaiah. John was to prepare the way. He was to get the hearts of the people right so the teachings of Jesus could fall on good ground. John's purpose was to break up the ground. Amen. Amen. His purpose. You, anybody, where, where my farmers at? Anybody ever grew anything outside? I ain't talking about no little chia pet. <laughs> I'm talking about you had to till the ground. You had to break that stuff up before you could plant anything. How would you look if before the ground was broken, you out there throwing seeds all over the place and putting water on it? And that's what John's purpose was, to prepare the way for Jesus. He did it to the glory of God. He preached the gospel. In the midst where were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the biggest hypocrites in the world. They had all the knowledge. They had the government on their side. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the very power there was. They felt justified of their own righteousness. You ever met somebody that just thought they were all that in the bag of chips? You ever met somebody that felt like they could do no wrong? All right. That everything was all about them. Amen. These were these people. And you got to be careful with people who only speak about themselves. People who talk about themselves, be about themselves more than the ministry. When people begin to think more of themselves and think more of them being about them, pride begins to sink in. Just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees did. Proverbs 16 and 18 lets us know that pride goeth before destruction and an arrogant and haughty spirit before a fall. Be careful. Be careful of how you treat others. We must be the loving kind of people. It doesn't matter. You are no bigger than anybody else in the eyesight of the Lord. Amen. Just because you got on some expensive clothes don't make you better than anybody else. Amen. Just because you got a nice house don't mean that you came at anybody in your house. Just because you got nice things don't mean that you can't let somebody enjoy your nice things. Amen. How would I look as a, as a Christian? I'm not even going to go there and say, how would I look as a Christian? And if I see somebody walking and it's raining outside, and because I have a car where I feel like, hmm, I don't want to get my seats wet. I'm going to drive right by. How would I look if I have food in my house and someone tells me that they're hungry and I don't feed them? How would I look if somebody needs a place to lay their head and all I'm thinking about is my, myself? And I don't provide them with a place to sleep when I have room in my house. I have running water. I have electricity. How would I look? I'll tell you how. Hypocritical. Hypocritical. Whenever we get to the point where we can minister to people, because our lives are a ministry, not just when we come in here. Not just when we do things for New Begin Family Worship Center, but your whole life. Throughout the week, I'm going to tell you something. There's a lady in this room that whenever you walk into Walmart, she going to talk to you. <laughs> and she going to make you feel like you're the best person in the whole wide world. That's that lady sitting right back. She got a head down. She got a top <laughs> Mother Patterson, you walk into Walmart. And I used to be like, man, we going to Walmart. We're going to see Mother Patterson. <laughs> if you ever had a bad day, Amen. that woman right there, God used her. Amen. And it's the same people. Everybody know. Every she go in there, she talk to the babies. The little babies be sitting in the car. She talking to the babies.
But that's how it's supposed to be. Amen. Pride. Interesting moment in verse 7 of the text where John calls out the fakers. <laughs> he called out the fakers of the church. The ones who claim that they're saved, yet their speech and their actions and the character says something else. God talks about us, and he wants us to be a certain way. These people, they came to the back baptism, but they came out of curiosity. They didn't come to celebrate who was getting baptized. He saw them, he says to the new generation of vipers, he called them snakes, he called them slithery, evil creatures, sliding into the baptism. Coming to the service with nothing good about them. He said, you snakes who warned you to flee God's judgment but the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits need for repentance. Prove by the way you live that you have really turned from your sins and turned to God. Jesus said, you shall know them by their what? Fruits. You shall know, Christian, when you see by their fruits. I shouldn't have to broadcast to anybody that I'm a Christian. Fruit. He 
says that every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is cut down, chopped down, thrown into the fire. It says every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. What are those fruits? Well, Galatians talks about the fruits of the Spirit. Chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. It talks about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Gentleness. <laughs> gentleness. Long-suffering. Patience. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. And temperance. Lord Jesus, help us. <laughs> help us. And I don't want us to do anything but look at ourselves. Because we got to be able to do self-examination. What kind of fruits do you show for? When people see Nathan Green, what's the first thing they say? Ooh, it's a good dude, but if you get on his bad side, he'll cuss you out. Oh, it's a good dude, but don't do him wrong. Because then he'll be through with you. You know, we talked about forgiveness in another Bible study that I was taking part of. We talked about how many times should we forgive somebody. And what does the Bible say? 70 times 7. We count, I'm on 489 times <laughs> now. I don't know. That's 490, but I'm on 489. <laughs> yeah. But you, you look, you gotta remember the fruits that you're bearing, y'all. I, I can't say this enough. I cannot say it enough. Your representation of Christ, everything, your walk, your talk, your look, right? Be, be mindful of that. Amen. We're going on. It says here. We must be good ourselves, okay? Don't just say we're good for we are descendants of Abraham. Woe to the ones, verse 9 says, woe to the ones who feel they don't need to repent due to a connection or a good relationship with somebody. You know how we say, man, I'm good, shoot. My grandma was good. Whatever, whatever. Now, you gotta work out your own soul salvation. We must be good ourselves. Many people are relying on their membership of the church also, right? They feel like I'm been in the church for however long to get them in. I feel like being, these people, they felt like being the seed of Abraham, that they were good. John just showed them their ways. He says that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. If you don't praise him, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, God will raise up rocks to do the same thing. Psalm 75 and 7 lets us know God is the judge. He put it down one and he set up that's what the word says. Be careful of your ways. Be mindful of your thoughts, my brothers and sisters. Why? Because don't worry about people watching. Because we saw, I used to always say, people watching is true, but God is watching. People may forget when everything is getting recorded, so you have to be careful. You have to be mindful. It was here. We have to understand that. John continues to preach. He tells them that the axe is laid at the root of the trees. If your tree does not bear good fruit, it will be cut down. God will make quicker work with you by his judgments. And that will begin with us, the house of God. 1 Peter 4 and 17 says, For the time will come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And it first began with us. How severe will your punishment be if you don't approve this? God has declared that the axe is at the root. That every tree, however high in gifts and honors, however green in external profession, no matter how many songs you sang, no matter how many sermons you preached, no matter how many services you attended, if it does not bring forth good fruit, it's cut down. Not only is it cut down, but he says it's thrown into the fire. By the powerful working of God's grace, my brothers and sisters, as I close, he shall baptize you with the 
Holy Ghost and with fire. It is Christ's business, y'all, to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And this he does in the graces and the comforts of the Spirit. Give it to them who ask of him. Christ says that I have come to sit down the fire. Oh, my brothers and sisters, he says that by the final determination of God's judgment, whose fame is in his hand, his ability to put out any fire is the eternal wisdom of the Father who sees all by a true light. And, my brothers and sisters, the fame that is in his hand, he sits down as a refiner. The visible church is Christ's floor. And on that threshold floor, there's wheat and there's chicken. My brothers and sisters, there's corn on the floor. The temple, which is the house of God. This type of church was built upon the rock. But in this floor, there's a mixture of wheat and of chicken. True believers, my brothers and sisters, are the wheat. They are substantial. They are useful. They are valuable. They are encouragement. They are ones who will bless God and bless others. They are valuable to the kingdom of God. They are the ones that light shineth and is not hidden. They are the ones who speak good tidings to all, who tell everyone that God is love. And because God is love, we too must be loved. Hypocrites, though, they are as the chaff. They're empty. They're useless, they're worthless, and every time a little wind blows, they're carried out to pasture. These, my brothers and sisters, unfortunately, they are now mixed, the good and the bad, under the same external profession and in the same visible communion. But my brothers and sisters, there is a day that shall come forth when the floor
is going to be a purification. And all those who turns out to be Chad will be burned up. Everlasting destruction will be your future. The hypocrites, the unbelievers, here, today, you still have a choice. And you have a decision to, I, I can't make the decision for you. Amen. Amen. I can pray for you all day long. Amen. But you have to decide in your own mind whether I'm going to be receptive of people and be a blessing and bring people closer